What, John outfought them? No, 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 no. It was way worse. As he tells it, the ODSTs did as they were ordered. They surrounded John, and one of them swung. What happened next, Petrosky says, defied explanation. Because the sound this kid's fist made, it sounded awful. Because they weren't like punches. They were, they were like rapid fire explosions. Okay, I was across the gym, but I heard it. It was sick. Like meaty cracks in a drum roll. It was just like, one of the ODSTs sustained a single body blow that instantly stopped his heart, killing him. Another trooper only took one shot from John as well, a punch that caved in the man's face. Two fatalities, one ODST with a cracked pelvis and one with a shattered spine. That guy never walked again. No one had to break up the fight. It was over in less than five seconds. Wait, he, kill he killed them? What he did was impossible. What do you mean impossible? Like, how? Like, like not human. I was listening over Hunt the Truth again the other day. It's a brilliant podcast series and I strongly recommend that you have a listen if you haven't already. Some of the most interesting and awe-inspiring moments in it is when you hear Ben talk about eyewitness accounts of the Master Chief, John 117. In particular, moments that stood out to me were when Chief was pitted against ODSTs in a gym only orchestrated the encounter to test John's responses to the augmentations. The way it is described really does paint a horrific picture of what the Spartans could have been. But as always, I wanted more detail. Spartans were originally conceived as a means to crush human rebellion against the UNSC and the UEG. As the first majorly successful super soldier program, the Spartans were augmented and built into the most devastating soldiers humanity had ever seen. Superhuman in almost every way they could be. It's difficult to substantiate just how powerful Spartans really are when you consider that Spartans have had very little actual conflict against other humans. And you consider that the species of the Covenant are alien species with alien anatomy and physical sizes and strength much bigger than the average human, it becomes extremely difficult to actually calculate and put into words how fast a Spartan can move, how high they can jump, how much they can lift, or how hard they hit. How hard can a Spartan punch? The short answer, it's extremely hard. Scarily hard. As I said, it's really difficult to substantiate and quantify just how powerful Spartans are, and when it comes to being punched by a Spartan, nearly impossible, but not completely impossible. You see, there is at least one example of a Spartan fighting other humans without the interference of a powered exoskeleton to muddy the water. That is the encounter between a freshly augmented John 117 and the ODSTs in the gymnasium of the UNSC Atlas. John fights with a speed, strength and ferocity that is actually quite horrifying. But it also gives us the best opportunity to answer the question of just how hard a Spartan can punch. Well, a single torso strike from John 117 as a 14 year old freshly augmented soldier delivered enough force to stop the heart of an ODST. The only way this would be possible is if Chief compressed the person's sternum so fast and so deeply that it impacted the heart and shocked the heart into stopping. A strike to the face of another caved in the man's skull. What would it take to do this? Well, thankfully, we know some of the mechanical properties of the human body. The human face is made up of 14 fused bones and the mandible the largest and strongest bone in the face. These bones are very strong and serve the purpose of protecting our brains from damage and providing structure to our facial features. An estimate of around 4,000 newtons or 407 kilograms of force is widely accepted as enough to break a bone. So given 
that it is quoted that John caved in a man's skull, we should expect that his punching force will be in line with or slightly more than this. Now we need to look at the force of the average human punch. Although that being said, that might not be sufficient. John has been training since six years old to be a warrior, so his innate trained punching force would be significantly better than the average human. So let's go with the force of a trained fighter. Trained boxers are able to generate a punch forces of around 2,500 newtons or 254 kilograms of force. This means if the average boxer weighs about 70 kilograms, the punch force is 3.5 times your body mass. John's body mass at the time was approximately double that of a normal human, around 140 kilos, which translates to 5,000 newtons or 508 kilograms of force for a punch, assuming the ratio between the body mass and punch force carries. This is already significantly more force than is required to break bones, but it doesn't end here. In fact, we're just getting started. At the time of this engagement, the muscle enhancement augmentations were quoted at being able to increase the strength by a factor of three. This means due to the augmented strength of a Spartan, not wearing any power armor whatsoever, John's punch could generate 15,000 newtons, or 1,500 kilograms of force. Now we're getting into scary territory. That is over three times the force needed to break bones. However, this leaves out a critical component of force, acceleration. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. The aforementioned forces are on the assumption that John is throwing a punch as fast as a normal human can. However, another one of his augmentations, the superconducting fibrification of neural dendrites, increased his reaction time by 300%, which would also increase the speed at which he could throw a punch. So with this in mind, factoring in the post-augmentation punch force of 15,000 newtons or 1,500 kilograms of force, and assuming the acceleration is that of a normal human throwing a punch, we need to add in the variable of being three times faster. The average punch speed is between 20 and 25 miles per hour, or 8.9 to 11.1 .1 meters per second. Very fast punches can reach 35 miles an hour. And it does stand to reason, due to his pre-augmentation training, that he'd be capable of punching at higher speeds, but let's assume it's the low end. Let's assume it's 20 miles an hour or 8.9 meters per second, just to get a low end estimate. 8.9 meters per second multiplied by 3 to reflect the 300% increase in reaction time equals 26.7 meters per second. Now, we have an acceleration, 26.7 meters per second. And we have a force of 15,000 newtons, or 1,500 kilograms of force. Put this through a mass times acceleration calculation, and you get the force of 40,050 newtons, or 4,083.96 kilograms of force. A little over four tons. Remember that it is widely accepted that 4,000 newtons, or 407 kilograms of force, is sufficient to break bones. This means John's punch could generate 10 times the force required to break bones. This is not even to mention that John kicked an ODST to the groin, and as a rough rule of thumb, legs are approximately twice as powerful as arms, meaning he kicked with something close to 8 tons of force. That's just shy of the weight of two African elephants. On top of this, John's augmented skeletal structure, his power and speed all combined to make a punch that could destroy bones with unprecedented speed and force, and gave the quoted meaty crack and a drum roll. The ODSTs were basically getting hit in the face by a fist-sized object that weighs over 4 tons, traveling at 26.7 meters per second, or basically 60 miles an hour. And that's not even to mention Mjolnir Mark VI grants the Spartan 5 times their unarmored strength, and increases their reaction time by a multiple of five. That means John, at 14 years old, assuming that Mjolnir Mark VI was available, would have been able to punch with a force of 20,419.8 kilograms of force at a velocity of 133.5 meters per second, which translates to 277 tons of force. And that isn't even including the additional mass of Mjolnir itself adding to the punching force. And also bearing in mind that 
The Mark VI wasn't available when John was 14. Look, it boils down to this. A 14-year-old John, fresh after augmentations, could punch with 10 times the force needed to break bones. As an analogue, getting punched by him would be like being hit by a 4-ton, fist-sized vehicle travelling at 60 miles an hour. Over time, Spartans would adjust to their augmentations and get more powerful over time, while their armour systems would continue to develop and enhance their already superhuman abilities to levels that it doesn't even bear thinking about. At some point, I'll do the whole nine yards on this and figure out how strong and fast Chief is in Mjolnir Gen 3 armour, but for now, let's just marvel at this god among men. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members Meek the Silent Cartographer, Siphonic Storm, my Tier Zero Transcendient, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea Darian, Stalker of the Realms, Falcon X003, Alvin, Mr. Fell, Flaming Halo, Starlight Legions Lost, Josh, Kyle, the TG7, Cat Herder Cam, Schneidish Leon, Ignizzle, Chris Spartan118, and Cooper, the Holders of the Mantle. My Glorious Reclaimers my loyal metarchs and all the other patrons and members that have jumped aboard to support the channel much love to you guys thanks so much for your support it's keeping things happening and helping the development of the channel and future awesomeness in a big big way if you like halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves be sure to support us on all major social media channels including discord and if you really love the channel consider heading over to patreon and supporting the channel over there or jumping on as a channel member it would mean the world to me and would afford you loads of great perks and bonuses while also helping work towards some awesome stuff in the near and distant future. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.